Hello and welcome. This is the reading group for my book, Living the Life Unexpected, 12 Weeks to Your Plan B for a Meaningful and Fulfilling Future Without Children. I'm Jodie Day. This is my book. Here it is. I think, first of all, I just wanted to say welcome. Um, thank you for even pressing play on this video, for even thinking about reading the book. One thing that I know, because I've heard it from many readers and many potential readers over the years, is that taking the step to read this book is a really big one. I know many readers buy this book and kind of have it, you know, knocking around for a while before they have the courage to pick it up. And then maybe they read a chapter and then they put it down and they, they just think, oh, I'll get back to it later. And they don't because it feels really confronting. And I think this is um, a psychological thing. I think it's actually part of the fear of coming to terms with the idea that, that we really are childless, that all hope of any other outcome for our life really is over. And the book is a very friendly book, but it is going to take you to places that perhaps you, you don't want to think about and which, you know, are kind of lurking at the back of your consciousness. There's some of the things that you worry about, about your identity as a childless woman, your place in society, how you're going to cope with families and events and people, even what it's what it's like for you to grow old in a society as a childless woman, as a woman who's not going to have children and grandchildren. These are huge issues and they don't get talked about enough. But in my experience of coming to terms with childlessness, what I call recovery from childlessness, we, we need to face some of the really tough stuff. But you know what? You don't have to do it on your own. In fact, I think probably the key thing that, that I learned about recovering from childlessness is that you need company. Because the biggest thing around dealing with childlessness at first is grief. And grief is a social emotion. It, it's, a, it's a kind of, it's a form of love. I mean, that may sound very, very strange, but we only grieve that which we have loved. It is only love that creates grief. And just as love is, there has to be an object, there has to be you know, someone or something that we love. So it is with childlessness. We, we have to have that, we have to have that experience of others in with us to talk to about it. And that's where I think that, you know, the online community is so important. And that's why I think perhaps coming together as a group to read the book can be so important because you're not alone with it. So I want you to take this at your own pace to take everything I say as a suggestion rather than an instruction, to trust your, your, your own process. And although your fear may be telling you that you don't want to do this, I think we, we need to perhaps think about fear and understand that it is there to give us advice and guidance, but it's not always correct. And just as none of us want to go to the dentist, we know, and we're, many of us are very scared of going to the dentist, we kind of have to go. And so it is with some of the painful and necessary kind of soul searching that we need to do to really root out all those parts of our belief systems that have are contributing to why we feel so shit about ourselves because we're childless. And some of those realizations can be quite painful and some of the work of uncovering them can be quite painful. But the relief that comes from being free of them, of being able to have the space to have new thoughts, to make up your own mind about it, what it means to be a childless woman, rather than to accept all of the things that other people say about it, all of those opinions, all of those stereotypes, all of those judgments, all of that shame, you don't have to take it. You get to choose how you want to be childless. You didn't get to choose whether you wanted to be a mother, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But you do get to choose what kind of childless woman you're going to be. And this book is going to help you make those choices and we're going to help each other and I'm here to help you as well. Before we get started, I would really encourage you to do the step that's on page five, which is called the healing inventory. Now you can do it in the book or you can download a version of it from the Gateway Women website. 
you just go to gateway-women.com forward slash book, go to the bottom of the page and you'll, you'll see a link there to click to download a PDF of the healing inventory. Now, it can be really difficult to work out, well, you know, has this book to help? Am I feeling any better? And I created this, uh, this kind of quiz, this questionnaire. It can be really useful to track your progress. I mean, these are very sort of subjective questions about how we're feeling about different aspects of our life as childless women. And it can be amazing at the end of this process to do the questionnaire again and to see, oh, wow, you know, I'm much more comfortable around young children than I was before. Mm, holding a baby isn't, you know, doesn't completely freak me out anymore. Mm, thinking about my old age, yeah, that's still my least favourite thing to think about. So you can really see kind of a nuanced level of, of where you're at. Um, and there's things about, you know, how much time you're spending on, you know, fit, you know on things that you enjoy. Um, you know, whether your friendships are really nourishing you at the moment. Lots and lots of different aspects about what it is to inhabit you know, our lives as childless women in our society. So I really encourage you to stop the video now to either do the healing inventory in the book or download it from the Gateway Women website. I'll also put a link um, somewhere near where this video is showing so you can just click, click it right now and take, you know, 10, 15 minutes to do that questionnaire and then put it away, put it in a safe place somewhere and we'll come back to it after we've um, completed chapter 12. Chapter one is all about our stories and I share my story in it and then the stories of some of the women who shared their experiences for me for this edition of the book. So there's extracts from lots of different types of story. There's also a list that I wrote a long time ago which is called 50 Ways Not to Be a Mother and that is really interesting because actually I think I wrote that first version of that in 2012. I now know even, I mean, I, even then I knew more than 50 ways not to be a mother. And now I know even more. You know, some of the elements of your story might not be there, but I would really encourage you to, to read through that list and see which ones apply to you. You know, add the ones about your story that aren't there, because I'd also really love to, to hear what they are. And something that I do in, uh, in my workshops and which um, really helps to break the ice when a room full of childless women come together, is an exercise that I call Words in the Air. Now, this isn't in the book, and I'm just going to share with you now um, a short video um, from a course that um, I taught in the past, which shows this exercise, and it's an opportunity for you to do it as well. And you might find that it really helps you to break down your resistance to telling your story, even to yourself, and then perhaps sharing it with others in this reading group community. Hi, I'm Jodie Day and welcome to this month's exercise, Words in the Air. So you'll need some post-it notes and a thick black marker pen like a Sharpie. Pause the video if you need to and go and get those items now. If you haven't got post-it notes, you can use small pieces of paper instead. Okay, now you're ready to go. I want you to write down one word or phrase per post-it note about how you feel about your situation as a childless woman. Whatever words or phrases come up, just one word or phrase per post-it note and use as many post-it notes as you want. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this. Just keep writing. Okay, now that you've finished writing your post-it notes, I want you to lay them all out together. And imagine that you've just done this exercise with a group of childless women and that you're now sticking your post-it notes up with theirs, mixing all your answers up together. This is what it might look like. Perhaps you can see that some of your words are here amongst the words of women that you've never even met. Maybe for the first time you can see that some of the words that you thought only existed in your head out there in another woman's handwriting. Each time I do this exercise, with a group of childless women, similar words come up, and others too. Perhaps you have other words too. Each of us expresses this in our own way, but the flavour is always the same. Seeing these words all together is a very powerful experience and it never fails to move me. There's so much sadness here, so much grief, so much loss. If you find yourself shedding a few tears, it's only natural, but there's something else here too, a sense of sisterhood. Of solidarity. When we see our deepest and most painful feelings out there in the open 
and know that others feel the same way and maybe even use exactly the same words, we can feel a little less alone. You might even have noticed that amongst all the words were a few glimmers of something else, a few post-it notes with the word freedom on them. Freedom is a complicated word for us because it's not a freedom we chose freely. I remember that when I was in my deepest grief, people used to say to me, oh, you're so lucky, you've got your freedom, and I'd want to punch them. I'd think to myself, freedom? You call this freedom? This feels like a dark lake stretching between me and death, and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to get across it. Maybe you'd like an afternoon with this freedom and see how lucky it feels to you. Because like you, I didn't choose this freedom. Looking back for a moment, how hard was this exercise? How long did it take you to get to these words and start writing? Not long, I bet. Because these thoughts and feelings, private and hidden as they are, are not actually that far below the surface. And this is what we carry about with us every day as we go about our day. Trying to put a brave face on things, doing our best to cope, and wondering why we can't seem to move forward with our lives. This is the stuff that we're carrying, this heavy load. And yet others, and sometimes ourselves, wonder why we can't just get over it, why we don't just move on, why we can't just make the best of things. This is grief. This is the grief of childlessness, the grief of the love unexpressed for our children. It binds us together as a group because our shared experience is one that mothers and others rarely understand. But I understand. We understand. We've come to the end of this exercise for now. And what I'd like you to do is to take a photo of your group of words and share that photo or just a list of your words if you prefer. You might also like to journal about it, but I'd really like to encourage you to share some of those reflections with the group. After all, we've been on our own with this for so long and we understand that in order to heal, we're going to have to do something differently. OK, well, I hope that helped. But, you know, it's a bit shocking, really, isn't it? And that that those words are so close to the surface for so many of us. I mean, I, you know, I'm astonished to, and absolutely pleased as punch to say that I don't have those words in my consciousness anymore. They are not there. I do not think about that as myself. You know, if anything, the weird thing is, is that my childlessness, I suppose I'm in my, my you know, I'm coming up for a decade of recovery, as I call it, from childlessness, is that childlessness is no longer the most important thing about me. I actually, I actually don't think about it anymore. I know that sounds extraordinary, and if it wasn't my work, I probably would go for days without even thinking about it, because it is, you know, even five years ago, six years ago, if you'd asked me, you know, it'd be like, my name's Jodie and I'm childless, and it would have felt like the most important thing you needed to know about me, and now my childlessness is part of my story, you know, it's, it's no longer there, it's kind of here, you know, it's part of the experience of my life you know it's been a huge experience for my but it's part of the experience of my life it is not everything about me you know um you know i probably you know being a writer being a communicator um feels much more important to me now than you know than being childless childlessness is part of who i am it is not who i am so those words do not exist in my consciousness anymore my childlessness doesn't scare me I'll be honest, I still find the the prospect of growing old without children, without um, you know, young people in my life to look out for me at that at that point, really scary. But I think that is a reasonable fear. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm doing everything I can to face up to it and to think about what I can do to uh to plan for it. Um but that that feels like a really practical fear rather than these horrible self-judgments that I used to have about myself because I'm childless. So if you haven't done so already, what I'd like you to do now is to, is to write your story. Now, you might want to write it. You might want to make a little short video about it and share it in the group. Um, you might want to just do it as post-it notes. You might, not want to do, you might want to write it and not share it at all. But what I really want you to do is to, is to make a record of it somehow. And I do hope that a few of you share it with each other because it. I think once we can start to see threads of our story in other women's stories, you know, rather like in the, the 50 ways not to be a mother, that we realise that 
and we have compassion actually for each other and see gosh what difficult rock and a hard place choices you know she she's been through that can gradually start to make us realize well actually maybe i didn't get everything wrong maybe i'm not a failed human being for not being able to you know read the future and know exactly the outcome of every decision i made maybe i can't beat myself up for not having the benefit of hindsight maybe i can actually begin to see that my story fits in this web of stories you know of being a childless woman you know if we had become mothers our story about how we became a mother would have similarities and differences to every other woman who had become a mother and just because we're childless it doesn't mean that that's also not the case there are every kind of way to become a childless woman you know it, it's it's time that we started to kind of free ourselves of some of the judgment and blame and shame because that has the psychological effect of just shutting us down and shutting down our potential to heal and self-forgiveness and self-compassion which we'll be talking about you know when we look at later chapters is so important so i would like to ask you to hold with great tenderness your story to imagine that it was another woman's story that you were reading. I mean, once upon a time, I used to, in, in the first edition of the book, I used to suggest writing it in the third person as well, just to imagine it was someone else's story. And to think, would I judge her with the level of fierce judgment and condemnation that I sometimes judge myself? And the answer is probably not. No one, it, I, I haven't met a single childless woman who is mean to other childless women in the way that we are mean to ourselves so i'm coming to the end of this video now i just wanted it to be like a really friendly introduction i want you to feel that i'm here you can ask any questions in the reading group you can do the exercises you can not do the exercises at the end of each month we'll be meeting for an online chat where we can talk about our experience of this chapter and i really hope that it helps you to get the best out of this book I've had incredible testimonials over the years from women whose life has been changed by this book and who are now living their plan B, their plan C, D, E, F, G. It's just a word, plan B. What it really means is living a meaningful and fulfilling life without children and doing it your way, not my way, not the book's way, your way. Thanks a lot. I look forward to seeing you in the group.